Well, good morning, friends. It's Crystal here from Homemaking on the Homestead, and welcome to my channel. I am enjoying a really nice, peaceful day today. Uh, it's actually kind of afternoon here at this point, but uh, it's snowing outside, so I decided to get busy on uh, a project that I'm working on that I'm, gonna I'm excited to share more about that in another video. But I was working on that this morning, and then I thought, oh, that's right, I'm going to... I had planned on my little planner this morning when I was organizing my morning was to get a video filmed and so I set that aside and, and decided I would uh, get myself some more hot coffee and come and chat with you guys. So as I'm enjoying my peaceful morning, uh, I realize that sometimes life at home can be stressful for a lot of people, myself included. I've, I have been there. And how do we reduce stress at home? And that is what I'm going to talk about today in this video. I am going to give you some tips and ideas on ways to help you reduce your stress at home. I think oftentimes for homemakers, the stress that we feel at home can come from a few places. One of those can be uh, a lack of organization in our day. Uh, I think that if, if a person has a full-time job, this may be even more of, of a thing, but oftentimes when you're at home full-time, uh, we don't necessarily always have, um, homemakers don't necessarily always have a great schedule that they follow or a great idea of how their day is going to flow. And then all of a sudden things pile up on them and they become very stressed by that. Uh, I, there is a, there is a, a, you know, this society view, at least I remember it when I was young, of, you know, the, the homemaker at home watching the uh, soap operas and eating her box of chocolates and the curlers in her hair and that kind of stuff. And in reality, that's, I think that that kind of a view of, of a homemaker is not only demeaning, but it's insulting. Because the homemaking is a big job and it requires having some order and having some structure. So I think that that is probably my number one uh, place to start is get that order and get that structure in your day. Uh, one of the things that I do in the morning, uh, most every morning, is I sit down with my notebooks and my planner and I write down exactly all the things that I want to accomplish. Some of them may happen that day and some of them may not. I will look back on the day before and see what did I actually finish and what things do I still need to work on. I will carry those through to my new list for the day. And then that gives me a sense of direction. When I know the things that I want to do that day, then I know what kind of things, because I've always got daily to-dos, I always have things that need to be done. What are we having for dinner? Um, you know, do I need to run a load of laundry? That type of stuff. But also it tells me that if I want to film a video, if I want to work on a project, if I want to cut out a sewing pattern, if I want to do any of those things in my day, then I need to uh, organize my day so that I can get the important things done so that I can have the time to do the things that I want to do. After determining your day and how you would like it to flow, the next thing to do is determine what are the things that are causing you the most stress. Is it clutter? Is it a lack of routine? Is it maybe you just aren't getting enough sleep? Maybe you are overcommitted and uh, with outside activities and making you feel like your time is being stretched in too many directions while you're at home. The idea is to focus in on what is what is your biggest stressor or the things that stress you the most. Also, I think it's good to ask yourself if you have unrealistic expectation. You know, de depending on your personality type, it can often be uh, easy to expect that I should be able to get all these things done in a day, and then when I can't, I feel stressed about that. I feel like I failed somehow. What is the point? You give up and things become even more stressful and more disorganized. So have reasonable expectations on yourself for your situation. Uh, as, as a 
empty nest mom, I'm done raising my kids, my husband's retired, my days look way different than they did when I had eight kids in the home. Uh, and we were homeschooling. I needed lots of structure. I needed a lot of organization. And so I had to have my expectations reflect that. I wasn't going to be able to have a perfectly clean house uh, in the midst of raising eight kids. That wasn't a reality. I could have a reasonably clean house with planning and with structure. Uh, so I had to set my expectations correctly. And even today, uh, as I'm retired, uh, my husband's retired and uh, we're living a retired life, I find that I expect more of myself because, well, I have the time. I don't have the kids, so I should be able to accomplish a lot. And then something comes up. My husband wants to go do something. Um, my in-laws need my help or our help, and so we need to take that big drive up and spend a few days with them. Uh, one of my children needs me for something, and I stop what I'm doing and I go help them. You know, me, there are still things that come up in my day, and so I am learning in this new state. Uh, my husband's been retired for three years now, but I'm still learning what are reasonable expectations for myself in a day. And also to redefine or define, if you have never done that, what are your goals as a homemaker? We see a lot of Pinterest, we see a lot of Instagram, we see a lot of uh, Facebook of, of women with beautiful homes. Everything is perfect. Everything is done just so. And maybe that's not your goal. Maybe that's not realistic for you. Uh, maybe it is creating anxiety, which, because you can't keep up with that, and now you want something that they have, but yet you can't keep up with that. So what is your goal as a homemaker? You know, for me, my goal as a homemaker, uh, especially right now at this time in our life, with my daughter and her family that live with us, and I have my own little living area, but it is not perfect. It is, there's still areas that my husband didn't get finished. I still have, uh, you know, things that I would like to see improved. I, the space is small. It's hard to organize. Uh, you know, so in, for my realistic goals is to do the best I can with what I have because I do enjoy the situation that we are living in. So I try to uh, keep things clean and orderly and picked up. Um, those are just a few of my goals. One of my goals is to always have peace in my home. Uh, and I can set that goal. You know, if I'm going to be a complaining, whining woman, there is going to be no peace in my home. So I get to set those goals and create this home that is my ideal. So what is your ideal? And when you find your ideal, you know, that's the time that you pull out that notebook, you know, I already had a video on notebooks and I buy these little notebooks and you know I write things out I journal in them and define spend a little bit of time asking yourself what is my goal as a homemaker and write that down then you can start eliminating the stresses in your life that don't match that goal if it doesn't match the goal it's not important enough to be stressing over the best thing that you can do is to deal with your clutter and do that every day as a, just, as a matter of course. You know, uh, go through the day, take five minutes, go through your house and start putting things back where they belong. It's amazing how a clean and orderly life will lead to a lot of, uh, of stress relief and a lot of peace. Uh, there are two YouTube channels that I think of that you utilize and go into a lot of detail with the Fly Lady system. It has not been a system that I have used, but I have known a lot of people that have made huge changes in their home by implementing the Fly Lady. The first YouTube channel that I, uh, am, that I know of is called A Better Life with Fly Lady Cat. And she's got everything down to a system. She meets with everybody in the morning. And it, it's a, uh, uh, she's on the East Coast, so it never really works with my time. But I am always encouraged by her when I watch her videos. And I will leave the link to hers as well as uh, Joy from She Builds Her Home. She did a, has done a lot of videos on 
on implementing the fly lady system and how it's worked for her life so if you're needing a little extra encouragement on getting your house together and getting some sort of order in your day then i highly recommend looking into the fly lady system uh, she has a book out also but also check out those two youtube channels and see what kind of things might help you uh, you know her her basic is you go to bed with a clean kitchen sink and always put your shoes on in the morning when you get started those are two that i remember when i was uh, looking into that and, and and learning more about it uh, but you know there is you, we, we can always take baby steps to try to get our life organized and when you start the day with uh, with organizing your day of with the to do's and the routines that you want to implement and the changes that maybe you want to make. My best advice is to start slow and take small steps. If clutter is a big problem in your house, don't focus on the rest of it. Whatever that may be, just focus on the clutter. One room at a time, maybe 15 minutes at a time. Maybe you can dedicate an hour until this is done, that's done. Once you have all that clutter dealt with, then set some rules for yourself so that it does not happen again. We all know the place for everything and everything in its place. I read a really fun comment in uh, in one of Emily Barnes' books that she was talking about clutter and cleanup and all that. And she said, don't pile it, file it. Don't put it down, put it away. And I love that because, you know, most of our clutter could probably be taken care of if we followed that, those two rules. And, you know, it, when the mail comes in, deal with it. When you're done reading a book, put it back on the bookshelf. Or, you know, as I sit here, I've got a pile of books back here that I'm currently reading. But those are my books that I that I am currently reading. I tend to read more than one at a time. And so I do set them aside so that I can get them and enjoy them during uh, my quiet times or my break times. And of course, I really believe that the best thing that we can do is have some quiet time in the morning and really covet that time. It's so easy to get up and just start immediately jumping into your day, but, but try to resist that. Uh, and if you know if you have kids or whatever the situation is get up before them even if you're not a morning person I think that it is a great way to organize your brain to organize things put it down on paper spend a little bit of time with the Lord uh, you know do some Bible reading uh, have that cup of coffee pray for your family pray for others and get your day and your mind all in the right place so that you can be successful that day and not feel stressed. All right, you guys, I hope I gave you some fresh ideas on reducing stress at home. I hope I gave you some uh, thoughts to think about, even if the ideas weren't new, maybe you just haven't implemented them or thought about them in a while. Uh, and I hope that it will help you uh, in this year right now when things are at a quieter slower pace usually in january to help you reduce stress in your home and if you did find something helpful in this video uh, would you give me a thumbs up i would really appreciate that and if you have not subscribed to my channel and you like my content would you consider subscribing I'm always surprised by the number of people that watch my videos when I look in the analytics and many of you are not subscribers so it is a really easy thing to do to hit that subscribe button. I'm getting close to 6,000 subscribers which is really exciting to me and uh, you know just you'll be notified then when I put out a new video and I do my best to get videos out on Tuesdays and Fridays. In any case, I hope to see you guys back here again soon. I hope you have an amazing week ahead, and I'll see you guys all in my next video. Alrighty, bye-bye.